It has been said for years that this 2017 historic running back class is about to fall off. People have came out and predicted the end of Joe Mixon, the end of Alvin Kamara, the end of Christian McCaffrey, the end of Dalvin Cook. I mean, the list goes on. I'm not going to pretend like I have not been one of those people. What is going to be very interesting to look at is one, what we have seen with age predicting the downfall of running backs in fantasy and two, how we should be viewing both those 2017 guys as well as the 2018 players like Saquon Barkley and Nick Chubb, the 2019 guys like Josh Jacobs, David Montgomery, and how this data illustrates that some of these players may be buys and others may be sells. So what we decided to do to try to get the most precise age production measures that we could is we used the road of his screener to essentially screen out running back finishes by age. So what we did is we looked at all the data we could get our hands on, which is going to be the years 2000 to 2023. And we are going to be looking at running backs by their age to average 20 points per game or more. If you average 20 points per game in a season, pretty safe to say that you were a top five option. And then 16 points per game or more, which would have been pretty safe to say that you were a top 12 option. We are only going to be looking at running backs that played 10 or more games. I don't care if you played three games and averaged 30 points a game in those. You're not really helping my fantasy team at the end of the day. And also, we really want to look at players playing 10 plus games because one of the main concerns that you have with these aging running backs is they're going to get injured at a higher clip given the wear and tear that they've had on their bodies. So breaking this down by age, the best example we can get is just starting at 21 years old, the youngest you're going to see in the NFL. You had 59 total running backs play a season at 21 years old since the year 2000. And you had three of those running backs putting up top five finishes, aka about 20 points per game. That was Saquon Barkley in 2018. That was Ezekiel Elliott in 2016. And that was Clinton Portis back in 2002. You had about nine of these guys putting up uh, top 12 borderline seasons. That's going to be 16 points per game or more. You had those three running backs plus Maurice Jones, Drew, Jonathan Taylor, Le'Veon Bell, Jameer Gibbs, Reggie Bush, and Todd Gurley. So this is just one data point. We're going to go super old. We're going to go all the way to 36. Going over to the 22-year-old guys, I mean, some of these players included Clinton Portis, Le'Veon Bell, Jonathan Taylor, Ray Rice, Ezekiel Elliott, Christian McCaffrey that were scoring 20 points per game or more. Now, that was a total of seven of these players out of a total player pool of 249. Obviously, there were a lot more running backs that were 22 years old in the NFL than there have been with 21-year-old seasons. Now, we had 24 guys that were able to average 16 points per game or more. Some key names on this list as of late, Devon Achan did this this past season. Um, you had Leonard Fournette, Reggie Bush, LaDainian Thomason, Joe Mixon, Kareem Hunt, Adrian Peterson, uh, Saquon Barkley, Sean McCoy, if we wanted to add a few names to this list. Now, going over to the 23-year-old guys, this is where we're about to see the big jump up that we have with production at the running back position overall. One, there are a way more 23-year-old seasons just because obviously at this point, we assume that all these guys are out of college and it's too early for them to be getting cut from their NFL teams. So you almost have 500 total 23-year-old seasons at the running back position in this sample. 15 guys put up 20 points per game or more. That was CMC, Steven Jackson, Todd Gurley, LT, Ricky Williams, Alvin Kamara, Zeke, LaShawn McCoy, Devonta Freeman, James Conner, Kyron Williams this past season, Darren McFadden, Kareem Hunt, Frank Gore, and Amon Green. And then you had 31 running backs that were able to average 16 points per game or more. So if you see, it's going to be a significant jump up to what you had with the 22-year-old guys. And then going over to 24, this is where these guys about peak. You had 15 guys averaging 20 points per game or more. LT, yet again, of course. Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Chris Johnson, Arian Foster, Ray Rice, Dominic Davis, Fred Taylor, Jamal Lewis, Dalvin Cook, Deuce McAllister, Adrian Peterson, Amon Green, Maurice Jones Drew, and Josh Jacobs in 2022. You had 38 of these guys averaging 16 points per game or more. Going over to 25 years old, they're still peaking. They are still at the top of their powers. You have 14 guys with 20 points per game or more. You had 39 guys with 16 points per game or more. And 26 is about the age where in the past I've been concerned about seeing a fall off from a lot of these top running backs. I mean, an example of a running back that was, say, 25 this past year that maybe I would have been a little concerned about going into 
their 26 year old season. I, I mean, Saquon Barkley from two years ago fit this mold. Austin Eckler back from 2020 doesn't look like we had anybody from this past season. But nonetheless, what's actually surprising is 26 year old running backs where I thought this was the fall off previously. Previously, I thought the peak was about 25. They're still just fine. I mean, yes, you see a slight fall off in the 20 points per game or more category here. You only have eight running backs, but you still have 39 running backs that have 16 points per game or more through 10 games. So where I previously was worried about the 26 year old fall off, what's interesting is that fall off actually happens at 27. There are two interesting things to point out here. The number of true elite level running back finishes. That's going to be the 20 points per game or more. That's about the same year to year. That's about the same from 26 to 27. You have um, 14 guys at 27 years old that put up that kind of volume. However, in terms of just running back one finishes, you see it almost cut in half down from 39 finishers to 21. So still you do see a significant fall off with the 27 year old backs going over to 28, 28, 27 look very similar. I mean, you go from uh, at 27, 21 year, uh, I mean, sorry, 21 running backs with 16 points per game or more 28. You have 22. So you have the big fall off from 26 down to 27, 27 to 28 look about the same, but then you get another big fall off at 29 here at 29. You only had four running backs since the year 2000 to average 20 points per game or more. Those four guys, Tiki Barber back in 2004, Priest Holmes back in 2002, when he just put up the most ridiculous season he could ever imagine, Matt Forte in 2014, and Marshall Falk in 2002. So if you're looking at, I mean, just running back finishes after the great financial crisis, I mean, you got one guy and that's Matt Forte. So really at 29 years old, you're not expecting these running backs to have the ceiling to be true elite level players. You can still see them put up 16 points per game. They can still be a running back one. I mean, you have the four guys we just talked about, plus Brian Westbrook back in 2008, uh, Michael Pittman, 2004, LT, uh, 2008, Darren Sproles, 2012, Sean McCoy, 2017, Eddie George, 2002, Amon Green, 2006, and James Thornton, the year 2000. But I mean, if we're looking at guys to do it over the past 10 years, yet LaShawn McCoy, Matt Forte, yeah, two guys. So 29 year old running backs. This is the hard cliff fall off. This is run for the Hills. There's almost no shot that they're an RB one in fantasy. And I can already hear you in the comment section screaming at me. Well, Mason, what about if they can be a low end RB two? I could use a low end RB two on my team. That, that would be, that'd be just fine with me if I draft, say, Joe Mixon as the running back 18 and he finishes as the running back 19. I, I'm good with that. My response there, wouldn't it be that you're not okay with it? But if you're drafting a player for their ceiling to be a low-end RB2, you shouldn't be drafting them. Of course, unless you're in rounds 16, 17, 18. There is a completely different story, but we're talking about players and we'll look at the rankings later on that actually have significant value. Now going over to 30, you're going to see the continued trend. There's just really nobody in this group. It's about the same as 29. The guys that averaged 20 points per game or more, you had Priest Holmes in 2003, Tiki Barber in 2005, Charlie Gardner in 2002, Fred Jackson in 2011, Marshall Falk in 2003. Since the great financial crisis, you had one guy in Fred Jackson. The 30-year-old running backs that averaged 16 points per game or more. You had those players we just mentioned, plus Corey Dillon in 2004, Lamar Smith, Thomas Jones, Adrian Peterson, Matt Forte, and Mark Ingram. Now, 31 is just unheard of for running backs to really do anything. You had one guy averaging 20 points per game or more. That was Curtis Martin. You had five guys averaging 16 points per game or more. And this over the past 23 years, ladies and gentlemen. Curtis Martin. Ricky Waters, Tiki Barber, Raheem Mostert, and Corey Dillon. Yes, Raheem Mostert did it this past season. He was one of the five guys that had been able to accomplish that feat at 31 years old since the year 2000. It's very funny about Mostert too, is he had like one game in his entire career going into this past season with 20 or more carries. Now, 32-year-old running backs, zero of them ever put up seasons with 20 or 
more points per game. Zero of them put up seasons with 16 points per game or more. 32-year-old running backs, unheard of. It's never happened before. 33-year-old guys is still zero and zero. The best that we had was Fred Jackson and um, a Frank Gore. Each had 13 and a half points per game. 34-year-old guys, you had zero and zero. Frank Gore, Adrian Peterson, they're out there. And as old men, you got to applaud the effort. You got to applaud the fact that they're still getting that paycheck. They're still adding counting stats to the overall career which I mean is super impressive in its own right. It's not going to help you for your fantasy football team. They were at 10 and a half and 10.1 fantasy points per game. 35 year old guys uh, to no surprise. Uh, I mean, you had Emmett Smith, Adrian Peterson, Frank Gore still out there doing something, but the very best Emmett Smith averaging about 11, I'm sorry, 12 points per game. Adrian Peterson, Frank Gore at seven, 35 year old running. I mean, 36 year old running backs. He had absolutely nothing. Frank Gore was the only guy to average more than five points per game. So if we're taking a step back and looking at this chart here, you are going to see a couple different things. The peak four running backs is the main thing I want to be pointing out here. It's going to be ages 24, 25, 26. That is when we are seeing peak production. That is when we have the most running back once. After age 26, do you see the RB1 volume almost cut in half from 26 to 27. You have a pretty big cliff. I I don't want to say cliff. Maybe that's not the best use of the word. Maybe you're like standing on the mountaintop. You you take a tumble down halfway down the mountain, right? Uh, Maybe we can say cliff. There's a cliff, but there's a little ledge that you're able to hold on to at 27 and 28. And about half the guys are able to grab that. The other half, they plummet to their death. Now, you can only hold on to that little edge so long. You have about 20 running backs, both at 27 and 28, that were able to average 16 points per game or more. And then once you hit 29 years old, you lose your grip. You're you're falling down. I mean, there have been very, very, very few running backs at 29 years old or older to ever go out there and average 16 points per game or more. If you're betting on a 29-year-old running back, if you're betting on a 30-year-old running back, if you're betting on a 31-year-old running back, you're betting against history. It can occasionally happen if you catch an outlier. And if you're betting on a 32-plus-year-old guy, you're you're betting on something to happen that's never happened before. Now, I do want to clarify something with these ages as well. If a running back starts the season... In August at 27 years old and he turns 28 in November, that is counted as a 28 year old season. That is what all this data is based off of. So even if this guy plays one game as a 28 year old back, he's a 28 year old back in this data. So if anything, that's going to skew this where looks like these running backs a little bit older than they actually are that like. 26 year old peak season that you have that final year. The vast majority of those players, or I'd assume a lot of those guys started off the year at 25 and they turned 26 years old at some point during the season. So now what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to look at the top veteran running backs in dynasty right now. Let's look at what their value is. Let's look at the expectations for these guys going forward. And if we should potentially be holding on buying or selling. Now I'm going to pull up the rankings on flogfantasy.com. We're going to use the community rankings, which are completely free for you to pull up anytime that you want. Obviously, all my dynasty rankings are on flogfantasy.com. You have pretty much all the rankings from all your favorite creators. Plus, we have our dynasty team analyzer. You have our dynasty trade calculator. You have three different dynasty rookie draft guides that are all like plus 100 pages. I, so much crap over there. Use code flock and join the flock on the site, link in the description, comment section. You're going to get 30% off any sub and yours truly will break down your dynasty team in a podcast. But nonetheless, if we're looking at this, we can move the slider and the filter rankings on that page to just look at guys that were 26 years old or older. And the first player that's going to pop up, Christian McCaffrey, currently the running back four in dynasty. Now the running back four seems really aggressive. But then you zoom out and you look at him in comparison to the rookie picks and and the community rankings, he's worth right less than the 106 and a little bit more than an early to mid 2025 first round pick. So essentially, he's worth the same as the 106. 
Now, if we're looking at CMC, he's 27 right now. He's about to turn 28. This is going to be his 28-year-old year. So at this point, Christian McCaffrey has fallen in the bucket of those running backs that he's already passed the 26-year-old age cliff, but he was able to grab onto that ledge. At 27 years old, he was saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to win fantasy leagues. I'm still going to put up elite numbers. Now, at 27, like I said, let, let's pull this data up again. What we ended up seeing from the running backs that were able to average 20 points per game or more, there were, I believe, 14 of them. Then going down to 28, that 14 has dropped to eight. So you do see a drop off with the elite level running backs historically going into their age 28 season. I'm not too, too concerned about that when it comes to Christian McCaffrey. At this price in Dynasty, I think he's fine. If you're a contending team and you'd rather have his production than the 106 in a super flex league, I'm not going to fault you for that whatsoever. I just want to be looking one year ahead as well, going to that age 29 season where this is that next cliff that we've historically seen. This is the point where very, very few running backs are able to hold on. If you look at the guys that averaged 20 points per game or more, their 29-year-old season, you had Marshall Falk, Tiki Barber, Priest Holmes, all doing it 2004 and earlier. So all later than 20 years ago. Pretty much if you look at the only guy to do it in the past 20 years, it was Matt Forte in 2014. So 10 years ago. I'm not saying CMC is not going to be able to be a true elite level running back over the next two years. Obviously, he's been one of the best running backs I've ever seen. I don't want to say one of the best running backs in NFL history, but one of the best backs I personally have ever seen. But what the data says is it says he can still go out there and maybe be elite, put up 20 points per game this season. The following year, the probability of that happening is extremely slim. And you're, you'd, you at least should be happy if you were to go and average 16 points per game in 2025. Now going over to our next guy, Saquon Barkley is the running back eight in these rankings. He's 27 years old. I believe should play this entire season at 27. He is sandwiched between the 108, the 109. The contract that he gets in Philly is nice and that he's pretty much guaranteed that starting job over the next two years. Yet to keep in mind that this is a running back that obviously has dealt with a considerable amount of injuries. And we need to be looking at these running backs with an individual perspective and take the context of each one of their situations into account, plus the player prototype that you have with the baseline of the historical data. You take the historical data and you don't just use the probabilities one for one. Of course, we want to take that data and then go through and look at the context of each one of these running backs. But if I'm looking at Barkley going into his age 27 season, this is where we have seen that first cliff. That's where we have seen a lot of these guys fall off. I, th I think he's probably appropriately priced the 108, 109. But if you're a rebuilding team, for the love of God, if he's still on your roster, you need to sell. Um, Jacob's going to play this next year at 26 years old. He's right in line with like the 111 in terms of value right now. I think if you're a contending team based off the contract that he just got, plus based off this data where 26 looks to be an age where you're still expecting peak level production. I think that Jacobs is a completely fine investment for a contender. If you're going to sell the 111, the 112, an early second round pick to go get Josh Jacobs and you're a contending team. I think that probably makes a lot of sense with the situations he's, he's in this next year. Going over to David Montgomery, David Montgomery's valued as like an early second round, mid second round pick of the moment. Going to be 27 years old this next season. So that's where we see that significant drop off, right? That's where the cliff is coming or at least the first one. I don't know if he's going to be able to grab onto the ledge. As RB15 in Dynasty, it does seem very aggressive for me. But, but if you really wanted him over an early, I mean, a mid second, I'm not going to fault you for it. If I'm in a super flex league though, and I could sell Montgomery for like the 201, if I'm a rebuilding team, I'm for sure doing it. If I'm a team that's stuck in the middle, obviously it's a little bit of a tougher spot. Now going over to the pure veteran RBs. These are the guys that I really wanted to focus in on the, for this video. We have Joe Mixon going into his age 28 season. If you had one season for Joe Mixon, the rest of his career, averaging 16 points per game or more, that would be a surprise. And you should be very happy with that outcome. Derrick Henry 
is going to be on the borderline of 30 to 31 years old this next season. If we go and look at that chart, best case scenario, Derrick Henry has one year left. I I understand that Derrick Henry's led the NFL in uh, rushing attempts per game or rushing attempts total every single year, essentially for the past like six seasons. You can take that one of two ways. You can take that in, oh my gosh, Derrick Henry's built like no running back's ever been built before. Or you can take it, oh my gosh, Derrick Henry has a lot of tread on those tires. Going over to Kamara, Kamara's about to be 29. You see a big fall off at 29 years old for these running backs. Like I, I would definitely be willing to bet on Mixon having one more solid season before we would with Kamara. Uh, Pollard, Ramadre, it will be 26. I mean, you should have one peak year out of them. Obviously, the situation's so uncertain with both guys that I don't necessarily want to guarantee that that's going to happen. Connor, Nick Chubb, both going into their age 29 seasons, right? So, I mean, this should be the year that we see this big time fall off. Zach Moss, 26. Aaron Jones, already 29, going into 29 slash 30. Raheem Mostert's 32. So, Raheem Mostert is a running back that this next season, if he produces 16 points per game or more, he'll be the first running back to have ever done it. Now, I lost money betting against Raheem Mostert going out there and defying what I thought his odds were this past season. So I don't want to come out here and act like I know anything. But if I'm looking at Eckler versus Mostert, Eckler, a running back that sees the majority of his value as a receiver in a full PBR format, can we get a cheap four receptions per game, even if they're inefficient for Austin Eckler? I think that's a little more likely than what we're going to have with Raheem Mostert being the first to ever do, uh, do something. So if I'm looking at this, I, I would rather have Eckler as well as Devin Singletary probably over Raheem at the very bottom end of these rankings. But yeah, I... I the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that people are just tired of talking about how old these 2017 running backs are. It's been a trend where people have faded these guys in redraft leagues over the past few years. I mean, these older running backs have won money for people in redraft leagues. So I think people are probably tired of talking about it. They probably want to move on. But looking at where the cliffs are, I, I, I think this is the year to sell. I, I think this is the year where you get out while you can still get anything. Even though, like we went through with a lot of those prices, if you're a contending team, obviously it makes sense to just hold on to the running back versus some of the picks in some of those instances. But you're going to have to take it running back by running back. You're going to have to look at their situations, the context of their production, and what you personally believe the running back can do. But that's all I got for you. Appreciate you. Hope you have a great day. Of course, you can check out all my Dynasty rankings. You can check out all my premium content. You can check out all the rankings and content from all your favorite creators, plus all their draft guys. It's all on flockfantasy.com, plus a bunch of cool tools that you can use to win your league. Code Flock gets 30% off any sub, plus yours truly will break down your Dynasty team in a podcast. But that's all I got for you. Appreciate you. Hope you have a great day. And really hope we get to see you out with the video tomorrow.